it's so easy to to come down here and be so laser focused on on the big moment, on the big race, the Baja 1000. So much build up and so much stress, but really the beauty is is in the moments in between. It's the the rocks that make up the desert, it's the seconds that make up the minutes, the minutes that make up the hours, it's all the subtleties of performance, the subtleties in life that make it so special. And I think the race, at the end of it all, although it's not everything, it's it really legitimizes why we're here, what we're doing. There's something about racing in Baja and desert racing in general that I keep coming back to. And I think every year I, I ask myself if I really want to do it again. And there's even moments during, before and after when you have the late nights and, and the long days and you're sort of like, why am I doing this? There's a million other things I get doing that would be easier. What we're doing here is is something that it has to be earned. We all come down two weeks before race day and we spread out across the 1300 miles that is the race course and we each are strategically given or select a section of the race course that's going to be best for you know our individual skill sets. You know, it's such an important part of it and you know, I think being down here, there's all these logistics that no one sees. We practice and we learn and we understand where to go fast and where, you know, we need to slow down. A big part of it is, you know, understanding where the highway meets and how far you can stretch between pit stops with gas and you know pre-running is, is such a foreign concept to so many other racers because you know it's really unique to Baja and, you know maybe other than the motocross track where you can spin laps and practice in almost every other form of desert racing you don't get the opportunity to ride the race course before race day and man it's it's a beautiful thing. Three weeks out exactly from the race. We're in the final hours of uh, prepping the bike and getting it ready for the ball 1000. Got the motorcycle two weeks ago. It's been quite the undertaking and uh, quite a bit of work to get, you know, a brand new motorcycle up to par. Now this year's Baja 1000, um, longest one I think in history, 1300 miles, so as a bike builder, you know, back of your mind, you're just thinking about every last detail to make this bike last and uh, how you can get it to the finish line without breaking, so leading up to it, it's hard to kind of contain the excitement and, you know, the energy, but uh, boys and I are looking forward to, you know, enjoying everything Mexico has to offer. We're down here in uh, San Felipe. We go down a few miles, shake the bike out, get ready. The race is wild. I mean, this year at the Thousand, we have 38 people or something like that down there with us. You know, it's like an army of people that you come down and they're all coming down to like, I, I don't know, maybe they're gonna see you for 20 seconds as you race by at 80 miles an hour, and then they're not gonna see you for another hour and a half. I've been able to do all of that, like with my dad the entire time. My dad raced down here in 91 and 94. 2016, he went to wash the windows on his truck one day and couldn't lift his arm up past his shoulder. Kind of went to the doctor and figured his spine was pushing into his spinal cord and pinching all the nerve endings. So he had an emergency surgery and they fused his C3, four, five, and six together. 
because he can't ride at that level anymore and he can't ride, like, it's his way of still, like, kind of being able to be there and, like, get a taste of it. It's not just the riding. It's not just the bike prep. It's not just the race itself. It's like there's a combination of everything. There's absolutely nothing that I've done and will ever do that will equate to like swinging your leg over a motorcycle and going 70, 80, 90, 100 miles an hour across the desert. I think the allure of racing is the fact that anything can happen and it can work in your favor. Everything can go your way and go just right and you come out victorious. Or it can go the other way and everything can go completely wrong and sometimes Baja will throw things at you that you can never plan for. and. And that's just the nature of racing, and it's also the beauty of it, I think. Day two. Shredding. Um... Are we rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. Oh, we're rolling. Yeah, day two, Vizcaino. Uh, just got down here with the boys. Keep going down there, purely for the adventure. Baby, let's just see what these clouds do. I'm not so perfect, baby, are you worth it? Come right here. Go, let me see you working. Now we're closing curtains. Come right here. Life is good, boys. brings me back down there is like how beautiful everything is you have this like mystique of Baja itself it's like these two different worlds completely colliding this beautiful Baja Peninsula and utter chaos in your head though to be with my friends and and to take this 25 years of riding and racing a motorcycle, something that I'm passionate about and that I love so much. I could take all my talent and you know, my desire to race and put it down in one place. And that's what Baja offers, that's what off-road racing offers. Some people it sticks with and some people it doesn't. For me, it just was what I was always searching for, I suppose. It's a true test of what you're mentally capable of and how prepared you are physically to connect the two dots and make it happen. You learn more about yourself in like 24 hours than you do a whole lifetime being a desk jockey. Mexico's kind of the wild, wild west. You can ride your dirt bike anywhere. You know, it's always really fun riding through the town and seeing uh, all the locals. It's pretty cool being able to come down here and just rip anywhere. Whether it's on a beach or through the open desert, it adds to the experience of ball hall racing. It's the ultimate adventure and the ultimate test of man and machine and it really doesn't get any more pure as an experience than, than that. Just pushing yourself so physically hard, but also just trying to be 
<laughs> just trying to be a butterfly. You just out there floating around. <laughs> Anyone can go out and ride a motorcycle, but to do it 1,300 miles across the Baja Peninsula is just something else. It's cool to be able to show people like, hey, it might not make sense to you, but this is what we're doing and why we're doing it, you know? This was actually the first race my dad has come down and done the whole pre-running uh, with me. Normally I'm recruiting friends to come down with me and hang out and enjoy, you know, the ball hog. You know, this time having my father down there with me was really cool, you know. I admire my dad a lot and um, I look up to him a lot in all his experience with racing ball hog. He's done some great things. He's actually won the race a few times as a co-driver with some pretty badass dudes in trophy trucks. And uh, you know, I, I aspire to do that one day too. When I first told him I was going to race down in Baja, he told me he didn't want me to. He didn't want to lose his son. He knows how gnarly it is to race down there. And I kind of told him, I said, dad, look, I've watched you growing up, going and doing this. I'm going to do it as well, man. Came back from that race and we actually ended up winning. He respected me a lot for that. And um, to have him by my side and kind of guiding me and helping me and my friends conquer this beast, it's uh, as cool as it can get as well. Race day. Getting ready, a lot of emotions running through the mind. Uh, nerves, excitement, a little bit of it all. About 12 hours before we head down to the start line and this thing all kind of becomes a reality. Um, yeah, definitely a lot of emotions. Um, I'm confident that all my homework's done and confident in the motorcycles, so yeah, we're just gonna go do the damn thing. This is the first time we've ever raced from La Paz to Ensenada. It's about go time, folks. this common goal to get this one motorcycle from the start line to the finish line and do it as quickly as possible on paper that's what it seems like we're all there to do but really I think when you look back the real memories uh, the ones that you cherish are the moments in between 
those moments spent with your friends and those lifelong memories that you make with that group of people. And there's really a special bond that formed with every single one of those people. You really come back like a band of brothers and a true bond, you know, just comes from those shared experiences. And, um, you know, it's all because of this little thing we did called the Baja 1000. Get lit with the left of that. <laughs> well, this is one of the smoother parts of my song. Nice! BGM, stop in there. <laughs> what the fuck's going on now, you guys? I'm lost on the side of the road. Are you seeing my baseball? We got motorcycles coming around here soon. Where are my boys? Jesus. All right, they're coming now, boys. They're coming. They're coming. We got fires. Fires are burning. That fucking shut that light off. Freaking turn your eye beams off, GoPro. Standing in the fucking road, waiting to take myself out of my misery. Just brush my teeth, trying to kill time. Wait for Clayton to get over here. I need some fucking booze. I had half a fucking Red Bull after 27 hours of fucking driving. And I'm wired. All right, camera off.